Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everybody. We're live in Las Vegas for IBM Edge. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. Our next guest is Phil Schomberger, Director of Technical Delivery, Proactive Solutions. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. All right, I got, to get you, I got to get your take. You guys won an award, you're a big part of the system here. What does the ecosystem look like here uh, at IBM Edge? Mostly customers, partners, uh, IBMers. I mean, give us a flavor of, I of IBM Edge. Well, I've been focusing mainly on uh, getting uh, my technical aptitude up. I'm looking at uh, all the different sessions that are out there, but we have a lot of customers and a lot of business partners. This is kind of a, a venue to educate yourself and get all the uh, latest information on IBM products and, and offerings. So uh, as a partner at IBM, how have they been to you guys to work with? Obviously the x86 transition to Lenovo is not a, it's, it's a new thing, but it's not new to IBM's ecosystem. They did that with the, the laptops and the PCs in the past. Uh -huh. um, how's that affecting your footprint, your customers, and your partnership with IBM? Um, we we, uh, we spent a lot of time working with Lenovo in the lap, laptop desktop area. Um, we're also a good x86 partner. Um, I think that it's going to be a good transition. Uh, I feel like the uh, x86 platform is almost like the Lenovo mainframe. You know, that's the biggest product set they'll have, the highest in enterprise product, and uh, I feel like we can, uh, since we have a good partnership with Lenovo already, we're going to do fine in that space. Talk about the award you guys won. You guys were featured. Just give it a little taste of the, uh, the accolades, the award, and, and the uh, category, and the reasons. Yeah, as a business partner, we have uh, different categories that we sell, but our, our focus is on the IBM, pretty much the entire portfolio. We sell all the products uh, across the board, but one uh, area that we've invested a lot in our human capital and with certifications and new hires, strategic hires really, has really helped uh, grow that space. And we, we received a winning edge storage award um, for, for growth and vitality in that space. And we had 700% uh, year to year growth. So that's pretty significant for us. And we sold a lot of- 700% uh, for the company? Yep. Year to year growth, so that's pretty pretty significant. Like I said, we uh, we sell a lot of uh, IBM XIV, um, the a strong growth area for us. That truthfully, two or three years ago, we weren't really thinking about is flash. You know, a dedicated flash storage, and uh, we had really good success. We've uh, invested in uh, trial equipment um, where we can take that to customer sites, coupled with IBM Sand Volume Controller. Um, and we've had good success with our proof of concept equipment and uh, we've made a ton of investment in that space and I guess IBM recognized us uh, with the award for uh, all the uh, effort that we've put in there on the storage pl platform. So 700% growth, that's growing slightly faster than the storage market. <laughs> so you're obviously gaining share. To what do you attribute that growth? Well, part of it is, uh, like I said, we, we had real strategic hires in that space where we knew they were going to be storage focused individuals. SE types? Uh-huh, no? SE types. Rockstar and sales SEs. staff. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Rockstar SEs. Some of them were ex-IBMers, you know, that had good relationships and we've leveraged that the best we can. Part of the thing that they get, I think our customers get from a partner versus uh, just working with IBM directly is we're very nimble. We put together packaged offerings with education and consulting. Um, we're able to do incentives and rebates and bring education to the, to the customer site. So we do have a, a different dynamic um, and I think that's been very successful for us. We're very client oriented and, uh, and customer sensitive. So given that you're growing, so rapidly, um, you, you kind of a lot of a lot of partners are under major pressure to transform. The cloud's coming in, margins are getting squeezed. Um, you know, you got to go up the stack. You got to get an application affinity. You presumably not feeling those types of pressures, but you know, Andy Grove, you got to be paranoid. Absolutely, so, absolutely. So, w if you're always transforming, like a lot of organizations. How are you transforming? What's going on in the channel? You know, we are, enlighten us here. We are retooling, as you can imagine. Um, the hardware business isn't quite what it was even 12 months ago. Mm -hmm. So we are, we're retooling, trying to get uh, up to speed. IBM soft layer offerings are, are exciting. Um, as 
there is a newly announced partner program. We're getting our education and certifications in that space as we speak. Um, we, uh, we're working on uh, you know, the storage as a service uh, platform. Uh, there's going to be new offerings coming out in the soft layer space, and we're trying to adapt to those. You know, there's uh, this elastic storage. I guess you just heard that from one of the IBM uh, executives that, was, that were here just a few minutes ago. But we are, we're trying to retool in that space, and we're getting more cloud friendly, more software oriented. But uh, like I said, our, our success in the storage business uh, isn't a fluke. There's a lot of customers out there that still own, plan on owning and will own their assets for years to come. So we're going to try to continue to grow and leverage those relationships, but we're not going to sit still and let the uh, cloud world pass us by. So, well, we, so we're definitely I, focusing on that as well. I was well. going to ask, you guys, you guys sell across uh, North America or just the United States? We, just, US? Just, just across the US. Okay, so uh, presumably you're seeing more cloud, more public cloud, more Amazon, right? Coming yep. in from the line of business maybe. Yep. Okay, so now, you got soft layer now in the bag. So, so talk about what you're seeing in public cloud adoption. What are clients telling you and, and, and how are you helping them respond? Well, the logistics behind it, the, I think the biggest challenge is the uh, bandwidth. You know, customers, bandwidth and security. That's typically been the com conversations that I've had. And sometimes it's a business model. It's kind of like leasing equipment. You either buy it or lease it. And a lot of folks are still on that edge where they're, they're going to be in the cloud or they're not but most of them are dabbling. We've seen uh, a lot of our enterprise clients are hiring cloud specialists, so that just leads me to believe that sooner or later it's gonna, they're going to have cloud workloads. Um, we do have one enterprise customer that's a large large bottler, if you will. <laughs> they, uh, they have um, an initiative that they will price every new workload, new requirement in on cloud infrastructure as well as internal, so public and private. With, with it's public a bake off, cloud. yeah. So they <laughs> they are not going to be biased at all. They're going to go to the cloud if they can. So what what are the results of those types of bake off? I mean, a lot of people say, uh, you know, I think we heard Tom Rosamilia say essentially the driver is not necessarily cost; it's the the flexibility and the agility. At the same time, you're seeing new pricing models, you're seeing utilization models because it's elastic, yep. so versus you know, wasting capacity. So, on a, and it is kind of apples to oranges, but when you net it all out, what are you seeing, and I know it depends on the workload, but maybe you can add some color to as to what you're seeing with the results of those bake-offs. What I've seen so far is that owning the assets are still a little bit cheaper than the cloud, but like you said, the flexibility, a lot of companies are, we don't want to be in the IT business. We want a couple really smart guys that can architect in the cloud and get our applications in the cloud, get us cloud ready as a business, but they don't really want to be in the IT business. And so, but the bake-offs have been, just like you said, a little bit more expensive on the cloud, but I think that difference is closing. I mean, it's getting closer and closer to buying the assets versus going to the cloud are about even up. Renting more expensive than owning, but gives you a lot more options. Okay, so then, second part of that question is, is there enough motivation within the enterprise to duplicate those kind of economics? Certainly there are in, in some, uh, uh, certainly uh, uh, sensitive uh, you know, financial services. Sure. And, and, and certain other types of environments, but you're you seeing a, a real rush to build sort of the, your own internal cloud, on-premise, hybrid, what do you want to call it? Yeah, I think internal cloud is almost a, a given now. Everybody's doing it. Um, using cloud loosely, I guess, uh, you yeah. know, it depends on how you look at that. A lot of companies are providing services for other business units, so I look at that as truly being internal cloud and even service providers within your own four walls of your organization. It's IT as a service. Yeah, that's right. Service and, catalog. And that model has been adopted internally, even if it doesn't have charge back or bill back or it's internal marketing kind of a concept, the, uh, it's still happening in all organizations. So going to the cloud is almost, what I'm trying to work for, work for in our organization and with our resources is to figure out a, almost like a checklist or line items where we can say, is your, is your application cloud ready? And these are the five things we need to make sure it, it, it can do to be ported to the cloud. And once it's there, it should be fine. But 
those are the types of things that we're trying to do to adapt to those those requirements that uh, customers are coming with us. To Phil, us I got to ask you though, and, and getting out to the mainstream marketplace, obviously I'm in Silicon Valley where the uh, the Kool Aid injection is at an all time high right now. It's certainly booming. Um, <laughs> DevOps is driving everything. You, that's clearly the cloud. You know, culture is DevOps. Are you seeing that translate? in the field, you're seeing DevOps being a key driver in the culture and also into the delivery. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's something that we're seeing and I, I don't think that, like I said earlier, the, all of our customers are looking at cloud and uh, you know, IBM statistics, I feel like, uh, you know, I came out here for another IBM conference a couple of years ago and the cloud was the word, right? That was the buzzword and they said, you know, all of our customers are going to be looking at or have workloads in the cloud by 2015. Well. I was a skeptic, and with DevOps as well as all, even even large workloads like SAP, I see a lot of large, you know, database companies are still providing uh, services in the cloud now, and that's I'm pretty shocked to tell you the truth, but it, it's it's truly happening. So I guess if you listen to the experts, it'll come true, and uh, that's where everybody is moving. All right, well, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate the stories, what's going on in the trenches. This is theCUBE in the trenches, getting the data, sharing that with you. We're live in, in Las Vegas for IBM Edge. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We'll be right back after this short break.